14 years ago, on the 8th of November 2008, a relatively new mapper by the name of Steve NC would post a map for Team Fortress 2 onto the Game Banana forums. The map itself was intended as a remake of the Team Fortress classic map, Conk underscore Speed 2, now reimagined to be completed not with Conk, but instead with Sticky Jumping. For those who are new to TF2 Jump, within this sub-game mode of TF2 there are two main ways to play. First up, we have the Soldier who utilizes Rocket Jumping, a mechanic inspired by Quake that you've likely heard of. The other main way to play is Demo Jumping, where by detonating sticky bombs you can likewise propel yourself around maps. As a result of these mechanics combined with the versatility of the Source Engine, over the years a small minority of players have decided to invest thousands of hours into mastering what we call jump maps, sets of levels meant to test the limits of both rocket jumping and sticky jumping. While considered a fairly easy sticky jumping map today, upon release Speed 2 would push players at the time to their limits, or in the words of Steven C. There are 29 jumps. Yep, 29. That'll keep you playing till your eyes bleed. While certainly Speed 2 was considered hard at the time, as players got better it would fade in popularity, simply becoming a stepping stone for CVNC who would go on to release Jump Adventure, one of the most recognisable maps in all of Jump. Now, this may have been the end of the story for Speed 2, however, a few years later in 2014, the scene of jumping as we know it would change forever with the creation of what's called the Tempest Network. While jumping servers had already existed for a long time, the difference with Tempest was with the introduction of online leaderboards, allowing players from any country to keep track of their completed maps and compete for world records. This would result in many new players having the chance to play Speed 2, and over time, attempts eventually would begin to try and beat the map on Soldier. The reason people would ask is that despite Speed 2 being a map intended for demo, Tempest still allowed players to complete maps off class. In a majority of cases, this leads to pretty uninspired gameplay. However, sometimes, trying to complete maps off class would actually be quite interesting, and lead to very creative strategies. In the case of Rocket Jumping, as most off class maps provide infinite regen, this would result in completions via wall pogo basically just holding left click and staring at a wall while traversing around walls. On the surface, Speed 2 looked like any other wall poker map, and for the first 11 levels, that would be nothing too out of the ordinary. However, players would find a roadblock upon reaching level 12. Little did Steve NC know when he had made the map, but this level would become arguably the most infamous in all of Jump, later coming to be known as the Speed 2 Hole. Now, for demo this level is pretty trivial. Two sticks on the ground, go up and pogo around to the end. However, on Soldier, this would become a very different story. Normally, for a hole such as this, the method would be to perform what is called a power bounce. A power bounce is a technique where on surfaces the player would normally get teleported by. If falling at certain very specific velocities, the player can jump, afterwards simply performing a normal rocket jump. This is how many off-class maps can be completed to Soldier, as by either looking at a very specific angle or starting with a specific setup, players have figured out how to consistently achieve the velocities needed to perform power bounces. While this tech would have made the Speed 2 hole trivial in theory, through being bad at mapping, Steve NC had unknowingly trolled the entire rocket jumping community. You see, for rocket jumping maps, the smallest unit of measurement is what we call a unit. Usually, when creating fail zones, maps will have their teleports be a single unit off the ground. While this seems obvious to do, when mappers first start creating maps for jump, standards on the hole were a lot lower. So, either to save time, or maybe just out of laziness, Steve NC decided to cut some corners and set all the teleports 4 units high when creating Speed 2, which if you're playing the map on demo is fairly unnoticeable. Due to the quirks of the Saw Ascension which TF2 runs on however, power bounces can only be performed on surfaces with 1 unit high teleports, and so trying to power bounce up the hole was unknowingly made impossible. And so, for the next few years, activity on Speed 2 would remain dormant. While players had attempted to beat it, the relative skill of jumpers was still quite low, and there were higher priorities for what maps should be played. However, sometime around 2015, a player would begin to look a bit closer at the Speed 2 hole. This player was Boshi, an at the time up and coming Ukrainian jumper who believed that the Speed 2 hole may be possible. While not the first person to attempt it, Boshi would begin putting in some serious time towards completion, attempting the map sporadically every few weeks for a couple of hours at a time. In his attempts, Boshi would come up with a very promising strategy for completing the hole, and while not successful at first, these attempts would act as a catalyst towards the first major breakthrough in the map's history. This breakthrough would come on the 11th of December 2015, as a relatively unknown jumper by the name of Naken would release a video titled Jump Underscore Speed 2 Tests. Inspired by Boshi's attempts, Naken would create this video using tool assisted software, or TAS, allowing for the use of save states and other features not present in the base game. Taking a look at this video, while the first couple levels are fairly uninteresting, it's upon reaching level 12 that Naken utilizes Boshi's method, which begins by performing a telesync to a catch on the ground just below the hole. Just as a note, this telesync is also much harder than it looks, as you have to have made it purposely bad to have the perfect speed required for this setup. 
However, it beats the previously known method, which required a speed shot to set up for the catch instead. It's after the catch where things get tricky, however, as Nakan does a wall shot, just barely allowing enough height to get to the inside of the hole. The reason this is so precise is that too low and you're unable to successfully get into a wall poker, while too high and you'll bonk on the ceiling, meaning that the catch as well as the wall shot both have to be incredibly precise. In Nakan's video, they only just barely get enough height to get into the hole, and from there on all that remained was to climb up and pogo to the end. The rest of the run following the hole doesn't matter much for this video's purposes, so I won't talk about it yet, but basically players already knew that the levels 13 through to 29 were possible when this video released, so the rest of the run was nothing too unexpected. Either way, with this video the community finally had hard evidence that the speed 2 hole was possible, and so all that remained was... So as it turned out, Naked may have unintentionally been helped by a bug which existed in TF2's TAS software for many years. While it's not clear if Naked's TAS was affected by this bug or not, this information was at the time still unknown to Boshi, who had continued climbing the ranks while still sporadically attempting map runs. The rank 4 soldier would continue trying to beat the map on and off in the weeks following this TAS, until one day on the 21st of March 2016, he decided to once again hop onto Speed 2 and grind out some attempts. While Boshi wasn't aware of it at the time, he was about to make history. And with that, it was done. Just 5 minutes into a map run, Boshi had become the first person to undeniably beat the speed 2 hole, and now all that was left was to finish out the run. Boshi didn't have the greatest strats for the second half of the map, however instead of taking a breather like most ordinary people would, Boshi instead kept playing, and with shaky hands this determination to keep on playing would pay off with a sub 10 minute time, and of course, world record. In the end this run would clock in at 9 minutes and 57 seconds, and while not perfect this world record would stand for a long time. In fact, forget world record, it would take 11 months until another player was even successful in getting another map completion. With two completions on the board, the door would finally be opened as other players would begin also completing the map. While these completions were definitely impressive, none of them were able to measure up against Boshi's run, which seemed to be in a league of its own. And coming into 2019, this old run would still remain as world record. Eventually, however, competition would arrive in the form of Riot, a jumper from Australia who would begin grinding attempts on the map himself. While Boshi's run was definitely good, it was clear that times could go much, much lower and Riot would begin closing in on Boshi's time, getting a time around 10 minutes. As a reaction to this time, Boshi would return to the map, responding with a new world record of 5 minutes and 59 seconds, an insane run which was immediately followed by Riot getting a time of 6 minutes and 23 seconds. While neither of these runs were perfect, it was still clear that Riot could potentially take world record any day now. To shake him off, Boshi was going to need not just world record, but a run so fast that Riot would stop trying for good. And so, on the 25th of April 2019, Boshi would come back to get his third successive world record on this map. This run, however, was unlike anything that had been seen up to this point.
It had been just over three years, but the impossible had been done. To say this run was impressive is an understatement. A jump which even today can take most top level jumpers 10 to 20 hours to beat had been beaten first try in a map run. Breaking the sub 5 minute barrier, this run would definitely prove Boshi's dominance on the map, crushing any chances Riot may have had at claiming world record. To see how Boshi set such a run, let's take a closer look. The first 7 levels of this run play out very similarly to Boshi's original 957 world record, simply going through the levels as fast as possible. It's around level 8 however, that things get weird. Wait, what? Okay, so a while ago I was mentioning this thing called a B-hop if you remember, and I was explaining how it's impossible to use on Jump Speed 2 because Steve NC made all the teleports for units high. Now, while this certainly appeared to be the case back in 2016, by 2019 players had discovered a new quirk in the Source engine, the Jump Bug. If you're more curious on the specifics, I'll link to my own video on the topic down below. However, to summarize this allowed players to B-hop on floors with teleport triggers up to 7 units high. And as Speed 2 was covered at head to toe in 4 unit high teleports, this had the potential to save a lot of time. While jump bugs don't appear too hard, there's in fact only a 1 tick window for hitting them. If you're wondering what a tick is, basically TF2 servers run at a rate of 66 ticks per second. And so, for hitting a jump bug, you have to have hit it within a 1 tick window. Or other words, a time within 0.015 seconds. Okay, so back to level 8, Boshi would perform a jump bug first try, and continue making his way through the next few levels until arriving at the infamous level 12. While for the most part, the method here would remain unchanged, one small optimization Boshi would perform would be to perform the telesync as far left as possible, as opposed to hugging the right wall like in his initial completion. Doing the jump this way would allow Boshi to retain a lot more horizontal speed after the catch, making the hole a lot more consistent than it was before. Just to clarify however, it had now been 3 years since Boshi's original completion and there were still only 11 completions on the map, so it would be expected that any world record should get stuck here for a long time. Also, if you're wondering why Boshi didn't just jump bug to complete the hole, the answer is that for level 12, Steve NC had inexplicably made the teleports 8 units high as opposed to the standard 4 seen throughout the rest of the map. Once again trolling the entire jump community, as if you remember, jump bugs can be only performed on teleports up to 7 units high, which honestly is kinda funny. Anyway, after level 12, the run would play out mostly as normal, however Boshi would additionally attempt new jump bug setups on levels 16, 21, and 29. While in theory these jump bugs should save a lot of time, in practice Boshi would be unable to get them all first try, failing 3 times on level 21 and 3 times on level 29. However, given the pace this run was on, having nerves hit would be pretty understandable, and given how hard jump bugs are, trying to hit them all first time is near impossible. Boshi would also do level 17 quite slowly, opting out of any potential jump bug strat, and finally failed twice to get into the hole on level 25, a level which for all intents and purposes was very easy, yet still would momentarily stunt Boshi. While this run did have many fails, none of them would end up losing a lot of time, and Boshi would close out this run with a time of 4 minutes and 22 seconds, smashing the sub 5 minute barrier and firmly putting to rest Riot's chances at world record, at least for now. What's tragic about this is that it was actually Riot who just a week earlier had posted a showcase of Speed 2 onto YouTube, featuring the jump bug setups Boshi would eventually utilize to achieve this monumental time. With this run, Boshi would retire from Speed 2 and ever since has not touched the map. With good reason too, Boshi had grinded this map for dozens of hours over the course of years, and getting the whole first try in a map run was surely something that no one else would be able to repeat. And so, once again Boshi would remain on top. The rest of 2019 and 2020 would pass with his time being unopposed, as the by now rank 1 soldier seemed untouchable. That is, until the 27th of April 2021. Just passing the 2 year anniversary of Boshi's world record, Riot would jump onto Speed 2 once again and begin some attempts into the map. His first few attempts didn't make it very far, however, just 5 minutes in, everything would change. On what was relatively slow pace, Riot had just become the second person in history to beat the Speed 2 hole first try in a map run. There had been no time to practice the rest of the map, however this kind of pace was once in a lifetime and Riot sure wasn't going to waste it. While the start of the run had been kind of slow, Riot would quickly pick up the pace, arriving at level 16 just one second behind world record. It was here that Riot would be presented with a choice. The first option was to trust in the strats he himself had come up with, and while battling with nerves, roll the dice by going for a jump bug. 
The second option was to play it safe, stay calm and collected, sticking to the slow but consistent strats to easily clinch out a new world record. Riot would choose to play it safe in World Pogo all of level 16, losing 10 seconds but removing the inherent risk that came with attempting a jump bug. This would pay off, and despite some unclean movement, Riot would arrive at level 21 now on pace with world record. Once again, instead of going for a jump bug, Riot would choose to complete this level slow and steady, choosing to carefully wall over to the end. This would set Riot back by another 5 seconds, however arriving into level 25, he would once again have the chance to overtake Boshi. This relatively easy level Boshi had got stuck on was all now that stood between Riot and finally getting world record. And with that, the run was dead. Riot would of course still finish out the run, and coming in with a final time of 4 minutes and 38 seconds, you would think world record was imminent. However, the improve never came, and today this is where Riot's PR remains. Once again, the world record would remain unchallenged, and as it came into early 2022, it would seem like Boshi was untouchable. He had now held the record for 6 years uncontested, and the only player to give any kind of challenge so far had seemingly thrown in the towel. The world record would remain at 422, that is until the start of April when two new contenders would step up and try and beat the world record. The first player was Cygnus, an American jumper known for his love of hole jumps, who until recently was the only person to have completed the ludicrously difficult jump armature bonus age. The second player would be Slox, a Slovenian jumper considered a tier 6 specialist who in the past year had been rapidly climbing the ranks and established himself as one of the world's top jumpers. The two of them would come to an agreement, cry and speed too until someone got world record. And so, for three days straight, they would begin pouring in dozens of hours into attempts as the race was on. And so, after briefly improving with a world record of 4 minutes and 20 seconds, with a final time of 4.03, Cygnus would be finally crowned as the new Speed 2 champion. This run would once again feature the insane accomplishment which is getting level 12 first try, as well as all the previous jump bug setups that Boshi had used. Additionally, it would feature a new jump bug setup in level 11, saving around 7 seconds, and a cool new strat for level 28 which saved about 3 seconds. Like Boshi, Cygnus would once again get the level 16 jump bug first attempt, only failing jump bugs once on level 21 and twice on level 28. Sadly however, just like Boshi, Cygnus would also get stuck on level 25, losing an easily avoidable 12 seconds, and ultimately this joke is what would prevent Cygnus from getting the illustrious sub 4 minute time. As this race was going on, Slox would also manage to get a 4.22 himself, just barely beating out Boshi, however at the end of all of this, the 4.03 would remain on top. Looking at the comments of this video, we can see how impressed people were by this run. And while it would stand for an entire year, Cygnus knew this run wasn't perfect. While there was no active competition on the map at this time, to Cygnus this didn't matter, as time save was still possible. Accounting for the failed jump bugs and choke on level 25, if Cygnus could just get one more shot at the levels after the hole, he knew he could break not just the 4 minute barrier, but potentially go much, much lower. And so, on the 5th of February 2023, Cygnus would once again return to the map, getting this run. minutes and 45 seconds. To say this run is impressive is an understatement, 
A map which had seemed impossible for seven years had just been beaten in under four minutes, even beating out Nakin's original Tats by a second. This run is very close to perfection. Aside from an unfortunate fail on level 9 and failing to one-shot level 12, it is otherwise near flawless, hitting five separate jump bugs each on the first attempt and featuring very minor mistakes. To emphasize, five separate tick-perfect inputs, something even most jumpers would struggle to do just once with anything better than 50% consistency. We can also see several smaller improvements over Cygnus' previous run, such as performing a speed shot at the start of level 15 or using one less rocket on level 17. Originally, this is where the story ended. However, as I was making this video, a new strat would be found for the map. Using a relatively new technique called a Linux wall bug, Cygnus would twice lower the record over the span of two days, going down first to a 333 and next to a time of 321. The mechanics behind how this works is outside the scope of this video, but to summarize, on walls that are at very specific sets of coordinates, the player is able to do what's called a Linux wall bug, where by changing your movement direction in the same tick you crouch, you can hold your vertical velocity. While this strategy unfortunately doesn't appear possible anywhere else in the map, after 14 years it's still nice to see the map getting so much attention, with the time in the 40x range likely being just on the horizon. Cygnus has also claimed a sub 4 minute time as possible, and while I believe this is approaching the absolute human limit for TF2 Jump given how difficult the map is, I have faith we'll see it eventually. While it's possible some other jumper attempts to get the world record in that time, considering Cygnus is now over a minute faster than second place, it seems unlikely that this world record will change hands anytime soon. The run itself is available in the description below. While there are some small mistakes, this new world record still manages to one-shot level 12 and only fail one jump bug, with the only notable time saves left being cleaner movement and a potential speed shot at the beginning of level 12. And so, today this is where the record stands. If one thing's for certain, however, it's that this is not where the world record will stay, and we'll likely see more improvements in the future. While Speed 2 is no longer considered to even be in the top 10 hardest jump maps, today it still holds a special significance within Jump in a way unlike any other map, with players in some cases willing to grind up to 30 hours just to beat level 12 a single time. 14 years after initially releasing, the map now has 57 completions, and with over 20 of these completions being done within just the last year, it's clear that many more jumpers will continue to face it in years to come. Either way, that's the story of Speed 2, the map which took jumpers 7 years to beat. And so, here we are, hope you enjoyed. This video probably could have been padded out another 10 minutes to explore some other runs of the map and explain various strategies more in depth. However, this is my first time making scripted content, so I figured I'd keep it short and sweet. This is very different from my usual content, so any feedback is appreciated. If you enjoyed the video or had any other topics you would enjoy watching a video on, let me know down below. Either way, thanks for watching.